Okay, so I just want to show you really quickly how to set up your very first assembly program so that you can test to make sure that everything's working okay um, and that you know the steps for, for doing this. So first I'm gonna find, um, you, you should have already installed Visual Studio. Doesn't matter if you're using 2019 or 2022, I have 2022. And so this is what you should see when it opens. You're always going to start with, well, depends. If you already created a project, you would open your project or solution. But we're going to start with creating a new project. We'll also look at how to open solutions that we've already created. So we'll create a new project. We're all going to always choose empty project. Um, if you don't have this option, empty project, uh, where it says C++, Windows Console, then you need to go back to your installer and do, let's see if I have a step. I'll just open. So you want to go back to this step right here where it says choose workloads and make sure that you've chosen the desktop development with C++ workload, okay? If you don't have that option, then you go back here to the installer and choose this workload. All right, so click there, click next. Name your project, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it chapter three. And then your solution is also going to have a name. I'll just leave it at chapter three and go create. I could always change this later if I wanted to. Okay, so at this point, here, you don't have any source files. The source files is gonna be where you actually have the file that contains your code. The very first step before we add a source file, always, always right click on the name of the project, click on build dependencies and customize and choose MASM. Okay, so before you add a source file, do this step first. Otherwise it messes things up. So that's step one. Um, over here at the top, you always want to make sure that you've chosen um, to go for the 86 processor. And then you go to source files, right click. And here at this point, you can add a new item or if you already have an existing item, like if I give you a file, then you can just add existing item and find the file that I give you. So if I already give you a program that's running so that you can test it, then you would go add existing item. But make sure you do step one first, which is adding the dependencies. So I'm gonna add a new item. And two things you have to change, the file name and the extension. So I'm going to call this um, chapter three, example, example one. Um, make sure that you only use dot for the extension. I've seen other students do dot ex, e, ex one or something. You can only use the dot for the extension. Otherwise, it messes things up also. Um, Sometimes students forget to change the extension from .as, from .cpp, which is C++ to .asm. Make sure you've got that correct, if not just delete it and, and re-add it. So at this point, we can now add our program, our code. And what you can do is, instead of having to type this in every single time, is you can maybe create this as a template that you can use or not, if you want to add it. Um, starting with chapter three, I will explain what all this means that I'm typing in right now. 
we're just wanting to test that this works, okay? So I'm not gonna go through and explain every single line. And I am gonna show you um, what it looks like when you make an error, what that looks like, and then when it runs properly. So I'll add an intentional error here in a minute. Now, you notice that I have some things that are capitalized and some things are lowercase. In assembly, um, it doesn't care if you capitalize or have lowercase, so it's not case sensitive. I just do it just because I like to see it this way, but it's not necessary. So everything that I capitalize can be a lowercase. So you could put prop as lowercase or this as lowercase. Okay, so here is where I would actually write my code um, if I wanted to to do something, it would be written here between dot code and uh, main procedure. So right now, I'm sorry, it would be after main procedure, not between. So it'd be right here. So I would write, write my code. Um, in Assembly, you can use a semicolon for comments to comment a line. So, right, assembly code here. I'll just put that. So, you know how, like in C, you use two forward slashes, in assembly, you use a semicolon. So, here at the very top, it says um, it has a little start. We can run our program. If it builds correctly, you will see down here, um, it has exited with code zero. You'll see the console window and exited with code zero means that everything went okay. Um, this console window, at first we're not gonna be using it, but we are gonna be using it um, in later chapters. So don't, make it go away, don't like change any settings to make the window go away, because then you forget. And then you're wondering later on, where's my console window? Um, so let's say, for example, I took this line out and main, so I'm gonna put a semicolon there, and then I run it. So this is what it looks like when it has an error. It says there were build errors. Would you like to continue and run the last successful build? You want to say no because you want to figure out what the error is. It's really nice. It um, attempts to, to tell you what the problem is. Uh, sometimes it's easy. So right here, if I click on here, oh, it actually takes me to an explanation if I'm not sure what that error is. Um, if I click on right here where it says, and and directive, I double click actually, it takes me to the line that has the error. So double clicking on the description takes me to the line with the error. Clicking on the code gives me more information just in case I'm not really sure what's going on. So I'll take that out, run it again, and everything runs great. So. I just wanted to show you with this really small program, I want you to just be able to install Visual Studio and then be able to have what I call this is just a little template because you can use this template for all your programs um, up to um, chapter five. We change some, we change a little bit where we start using the console window, but you don't have to type all this and all this every single time. You can just write the code here if you have this project template. 
So you could call it, instead of calling chapter three, you could call this project template and then copy that template every single time. So if I close this and I want to get back to, um, I want to get back to that program. So let's say I'm not done. I just started it. I'm going to go back to Visual Studio 2022. That's one way I can do it. And then I can go open a project or solution. And, oh, actually, one thing I should have showed you, let's start this over, okay? So here's the one that I just did, but notice that it put it under users, G Serrano Korea, source, repos, chapter three. So typically what I like to do, if you notice here on my desktop, I have this folder called assembly language. No, that's the PowerPoint slides. Uh, this one right here, assembly. So in this folder, I put all of my projects uh, that I'm working on. I just deleted a bunch of stuff, but I'll put the projects on here. And so that it's just easy to get back to that project. So right now to get back to my project, I can just click here or I would have to go here. So when you go to create a new project, uh, next time, make sure you, you change this location, make a folder on your desktop, put everything on your desktop so you can easily find your projects, okay? But right now I'm gonna just open this one that I just did and it opens it nicely. Um, and then also what I can do is I can make a copy of it. So let's see. I'm gonna get back to users. It's the thing. So it just takes too much. Okay, so I'm gonna go to this PC. Source. And what I'll do is um, I'll move out this chapter three. So if I have a, a folder here, and I call it, you know, assembly projects. And I move this one in there. And from now on, this chapter three can be my template and I can just make a copy of it. So, a copy of that. So once I make a copy of it, I I can open that copy by just clicking on the solution. So now what I've opened is um, chapter three but it's under, under the copy. So let's say that I make a change. Close it, save it. So if I go under chapter three and open this solution, This is the original one. It has no changes. Oh, this one, the one that has the changes. And of course you would name it something else so it wouldn't be so confusing. But my whole point is that you can make a, a solution that 
could be a template. So this could be called template. And, and from now on, um, I would rename a template. From now on, you could use that and just copy it over and over and over and add the code to to this part here in the middle. Okay, so once again, um, if you just get your Visual Studio installed, see if you can run this template. And um, this right here, this header files, these folders you can delete or keep them in here if they're not needed. I don't ever delete them, but you'll see that people like to delete them. I also wanted to show you, we'll use a lot. If you right click on um, chapter three, I think it's under here. There are properties. Lots of properties that we're going to be working with. If that console screen does bother you, you don't want to see that black console screen from now on. It's under, let's see, under system, link or system right here. And you can I can't remember exactly what the setting is for deleting this, but you can delete this. Um, but I would just leave it there because we will start using it in chapter five. Also, when we did, when we added the dependency MASM, just so you know and you're aware, um, it adds this configuration, this property right here. So if you, if you don't see that under properties, if you're having issues, uh, make sure that this is there. Make sure that um, when you right click and you build dependencies, that that is checked off. And again, make sure this is checked off first before you add this file. If not, delete this file add, and add it first. And third, just as a review, remember that this is set at 86. And we'll talk all, all about this in chapters. When we start with chapter three, why we need all these settings set like this. Okay, thank you. Email me if you have any questions.